Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise, I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here with a wig review and color spotlight. This is the brand new Belle Tress Color Sangria. I have on Bellissima, I have reviewed this wig, but it's been a few years, so I will review this wig, but the star of this video is this color. Sangria is gorgeous. If you want to know more about either Bellissima or Sangria, then stick around. I want to thank Name Brand Wigs for sending me this wig so I could show it to all of you. I am so grateful. When I told Rachel at Name Brand Wigs that I really wanted to review Sangria because I hadn't seen any information about this color out there, she was all for it. And to be able to show you in one of my favorite all-time short bobs, which is Bellissima, is thrilling. Let's take a look at this one from all sides. Isn't this an adorable short bob? Now, Couple things, couple of housekeeping items. Number one, I am filming in a different place in my house right now. Let me know what you think of this background. We're up in my living room. I won't be able to film here all the time, but if you like it, I'll try to do them periodically, especially if I can do color where I really wanna focus on color because I have a lot of natural lighting. I've got windows all around me and I think that will help get truer color I'm just not sure about this background, so please let me know what you think. It's the only wall that I have. Otherwise, I have to film in an open space, and I think the background's too distracting for a wig review, so I'd like your feedback. The second housekeeping item. There is a challenge with this particular piece. I've had multiple Bellissimas, and this one is doing something really funky with the part. Not typical. I've had Bellissimas that parted a little bit better than this. Let me explain to you what it's doing. I am going to do a tip Tuesday and I'm going to show you how to work with this wig. If you get, it will, it will help you know how to work with any wig if you get one that has these challenges. Number one, the part is a left monofilament, but where it wants to part is very deep in that monofilament, almost to the wefting. I tried to adjust that part line and it won't cooperate. It's also very densely knotted and you really can't see that part, which I don't like. I prefer to be able to see a part line because we're paying a premium price to get a mono part wig. I really wanna see it. So in my Tip Tuesday, I'm not only going to pluck the part line, I am gonna show you how to adjust it with using heat. So if you ever struggle with this, stay tuned for that Tip Tuesday. Now this is a heat friendly wig, so you can take heat up to, I believe, 350 degrees to it to change the style. You can also take low heat to a regular synthetic if you ever have to change the part line. So don't, um, just keep in mind what kind of fiber you're working with. I'll be showing you the best way to work with a heat friendly wig when I do that Tip Tuesday. So that is something you'll notice it's a very deep, lots and lots of hair on this side compared to this side. That is because of how this is wanting to part. I believe it should be moved over about maybe a quarter of an inch and that would sit smack dab in that monofilament and that would give a little bit more of a symmetrical look. It wouldn't be so heavy to the side. So please keep that in mind as you're watching this video. And if you like what you see, but some of it you're unsure of, maybe stay tuned for that tip Since Tuesday. I talked about the mono part, let's talk about the lace front as well. So this wig has got a lace front and let me show that to you. So you can see it's a wide lace front. It goes all the way to the temples. Oops. I don't think I set it down right. There we go. Now, you can see some of the knotting on this one. Let's talk a little bit about Bell Tress and their lace fronts. A few years ago, when I, four years ago, when I first started wearing wigs, I did not like Bell Tress lace fronts. They were very knotty looking and the knots were quite big. I think they've done a lot to improve their lace fronts over the last 18 months or so. And I've seen many Bell Tress wigs that have great lace fronts. They've come a long way. So if you 
had experience with Beltrice years ago and didn't really like their lace fronts, I would give them another look. In some colors, they're amazing. This one is just a little bit knotty. I do think it's a challenge when you get a dark color that doesn't have any highlighting because they've started to use uh, the technique that some other manufacturers use where they bring some of those highlights to the front so that the knots are the light colors. They really don't have that here. They can't do that. So what I'm going to do in my Tip Tuesday is I'm going to show you how to put a little makeup on there just to blur those knots. So if you're looking at this and you love it, but you're not sure about visible knots, I don't think they're terrible. I will just say that. I don't think they'd bother me too much. Just dab a little face powder on there, something to blur those. I will show that. If if you want to wear this styled, if you want to pull it up into a clip, you want to put a little top knot on top, you can totally do that. And that's where you might want to blur out those knots. But if you plan to wear this as it comes, so down, swept to the side, you really can't see them that much, especially if you pull it down a little bit more. And if you like bangs, I think this is one that you can cut bangs into really easily. And then you don't have to worry at all about that knotting. Let me grab my brush here. Just because of this deep part, I do have trouble getting it to stay. So we're just going to work with that until I can, I can get it modified. All right. Some of you guys are going to ask where I got this brush. I purchased this on Amazon. It was super cheap. I absolutely love it. You don't typically want to brush a heat-friendly wig or any synthetic wig, but this one has very wide and it doesn't have, it's, they're very soft and flexible. I really like that for sli straight, sleek styles, almost better than a wide tooth comb. I will link that in the description. Anyway, so we talked about the lace front. We talked, li talked about the part line. I will show you the cap in just a second. Let's talk about fit. Bell Trust is known for running big. They're one of the brands that is referred to as more big head friendly. And I actually have a blog post on my website where I talk about some different things about wigs. And one of them is a chart that tells you how the different major manufacturers run, whether they run smaller than average, average or larger than average. I will link that in the description. This is one that's known to run larger than average, typically. My dog is outside and he was starting to bark, so I needed to go see just to make sure he wasn't going to chase anything. All right, so this one has tons and tons of stretch, tons of stretch. And I have the adjusters cinched in slightly, about halfway on each side. I have a 22 inch circumference. If I'm cinching adjusters in, that means it runs bigger than average. I think this will comfortably fit 22 and a quarter, even maybe up to 22 and a half comfortably. I think it probably could fit a 22 and three quarters, maybe a 23. I have a really hard time estimating fit on wigs for somebody that's more than a half inch bigger than me because there's so many factors. Well, here's what I want you to take away from this. Your circumference is not the only measurement that matters and impacts fit and impacts a wig and how it lays on you. You're over the top of your head, front to back and ear to ear. Those matter too because that impacts how the cap shapes onto your head, which can impact even how tight it is around your circumference. So look at my measurements in the description. I include them in every single video and note what mine are compared to yours. I think this one is running big. I think if you are a, up to a half inch larger than me everywhere, I think you're going to be okay with this fit. But again, shape, size, all of that matters. I get awesome coverage on this one all the way down below. So there's the top of my ear. There's the bottom of the ear, the tab. That is perfect. That is exactly where I like ear tabs to fall on me. It gives me the best coverage for my bio hair on the sides. It can make wearing glasses a little tricky because it does dip a little bit below my ear. So if you're a full-time glasses wearer and your measurements are similar to mine, just note that you may have a little pinching. Let me grab a pair of glasses. I'll show you. Okay. So what I'm talking about is when you go to slide glasses in, if the ear tabs are too low, then you kind of have to either slide them underneath the ear tab or over the ear tab. These are actually sliding underneath the ear tab pretty well for me, and they seem like they'd be really comfortable. So with my measurements, even though I'm having to 
kind of lift up the ear tab a little, I think it's working. And I'm gonna actually link in the description these glasses, they're by Vici Eyewear. I have been partnering with them to learn a little bit more about their glasses and they're awesome. They're a little bit more expensive than the drugstore readers, but I love them because they don't have any distortion, which is a big deal to me. So anyway, I digress. All right, so that's uh, kind of fit and coverage. Let's talk about inside this cap. There you go. There's your mono part, your lace front, very, very far over on this side, soft ear tabs with bendable stays, extended nape, bra strap adjusters, and they've already kind of come out a little bit. These can be hard to get to stay. So if you have to cinch in your wigs with these type of adjusters, just do a little stitch with a needle and thread um, to hold it in place once you get it adjusted the way that you want to adjust it, and that will work just fine. Now, if you have a petite head, bell tress is gonna be a struggle for you because they generally do run big. Um, I would highly recommend that you learn how to adjust cap size if you're petite. It will really open up a lot of different options for you and it's really not super hard from, I mean, I've never done it, but I've watched tons of videos. I actually have a playlist on my YouTube channel titled Other People's Tips and Tricks. Every video that I've come across to show how to adjust the cap size, I have pinned in that playlist. I don't have any myself, but there's lots out on YouTube, so I highly recommend that you try that if you're struggling with wig fit, because I hear from my wig sisters all the time. They wish they could wear some of these bell truss wigs, but they're too big for them. You can remedy Let's that. Let's talk about density and hair fibers. So this is what I would consider uh, of the upper end of low density. I struggle to call it moderate density because I really don't feel like this has much hair at all. It's not super low density, but I would say it's definitely on the upper end of low density. There is no permatease on this one. So you do not have any poof and you're not getting any poof. But the reason why I say this is the upper end of low density is because I do feel like it's got some of a, a bit of a rounded look to it. It isn't super, super flat. Sometimes really low density, no permatease bobs can lay really flat. And for somebody like me with a bigger bone structure and a rounder face, that's not terribly flattering. I do need a little bit of lift. I might prefer a slight bit more lift than this one has, but it, it, it works for me. And I was able to wear this early in my wig wearing journey when everything overwhelmed me. So if you can relate, if you've been losing your hair for a long time and all wigs feel wiggy to you, this one could be a good one to try because it was really comfortable for me early in my journey and it never really overwhelmed me. I really appreciate that about this style. Now, these are heat friendly fibers, like I mentioned earlier, and I would consider them a medium denier. So they're not a super fine fiber. They're, they've got a nice, feel to them, very sleek, very silky. I love, love the feel of Bell Trust Heat Friendly Fibers. They really are some of my favorites out of the box. They're so realistic feeling and just beautiful. And in a bob this length, I really don't think you have to worry about heat friendly fibers being difficult to care for. This is the perfect length that it will not rub up on your clothing. That is, the fr that is the enemy of heat friendly fibers. The friction from rubbing up on other materials, this one isn't going to do that. My Bellissima goes and goes and goes and I don't have to hardly ever take heat to it. If you have never seen my video where I show you how to care for straight heat friendly wigs using heat, I will link that in the description. I highly recommend you watch it before you start embarking on the heat friendly wig journey, but this one is going to do just fine. If it's anything like my other Bellissima, it's gonna do just fine. I wouldn't stay away from this because of the heat friendly fibers if you like what you see. All right, I think I covered everything. Let's get to color. This color, this is the whole reason why I wanted to do this video. Sangria. Look at how gorgeous this color is. Now, it is, vibrant and brilliant. The red in it is bordering on fuchsia. Seriously, it is like a fuchsia red. And the root is so subtle, it's almost hard to call this a rooted wig. So I will take this off and show it up close too, but I have studied, I studied this one in outside light, in indoor light, and 
I'm struggling to describe the root. I wish I had more details about it. It almost looks like a darker color to this. Like it's tonally very similar. At first, when I first saw it, I thought maybe it was a 1B because it is, I mean, this is a dark, vibrant color and it doesn't have any warmth to it. So I was struggling to say that it was more of a medium brown or a four because sometimes those can look a little warm. This isn't really, it's just almost like it's got some of this color in it, like a plummy color and it's dark, but it is so subtle, so subtle. It's not, sometimes in these type of fashion colors, you will get a super dark root and it just looks so unrealistic. Not that this color looks like it's realistic. It's definitely not a color found in nature, but they just did such a good job. Like when I pull it over here, like you can see that a little bit there. So, you know, the rooting is in there, but they didn't draw it out. And so it's, it's really subtle. I really, really like what they did with that root. And then this just has all kinds of dynamic tones running through it. Just a brilliant wine, fuchsia, red, cherry. I mean, just all of the bright red things you can think of. What I think is so exciting about a color like this is I think it really opens up wig wearing to people who maybe aren't losing their hair. Somebody who wants to have this bright red color will find that the upkeep is significant. This fades so fast on human hair. Trying to keep a red like this vibrant and brilliant is almost a losing battle. Within a week or two, it's definitely lost a lot of its brilliance. A wig like this isn't going to do that. This will hold its color for the life of the wig. And so if you are watching this video and you don't wear wigs, but you're drawn to the color, you don't have to have hair loss to wear wigs. Wigs can be for everybody. And I love when they put out fashion colors like this because for some people, that's their introduction to the wig wearing journey because they wouldn't want to do that to their bio hair. It's so fun. All right, everybody. I think I got it all. I feel a little discombobulated being in a different place in my house, but... I think I covered it. If I missed something, please let me know in the comments. I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm going to get outside so you can see this color outside. And again, stay tuned for that Tip Tuesday where I'm going to show you how I work with this to make it my own. You won't believe the transformation. Talk to you guys in my next video. All right, everyone. It's really sunny out here. I don't have any suitable indirect light, so you're going to get to see this in full sunlight. And it's super windy, so you're going to get to see how Belissima moves in the wind. It's so bold. It's not moving as naturally as it would because this is so far over. Once I get that part line fixed, it's going to lay less heavy on this side and it will move a little bit better. Isn't it a beautiful color? Even if you won't wear bold colors like this, I think we can all appreciate this is a stunning fashion color. And then there's that root. All right, everybody, thanks for watching.